everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this larger of my, well I called it the beautiful hexagon gift bag. I made it about six months ago, I'll link it up here. And that one was about that size. Really, really nice, but lots of people did request for me to make a larger one. So I was looking through my requests list and um, this one was on there quite a few times. So this is what we're going to do today. Very easy to do, you don't need any fancy equipment or anything. We'll just open the top there and you can see you've got heaps of space inside. You do this with Christmas design, you know, have a nice Father Christmas or something there on the front or a big Ponsettia flower. This would look fantastic under the tree. So yeah, let me show you how to make it. Okay, so I've already prepared my butterfly and I've actually just put loads of glossy accents right through the centre there. So it's just drying, so it's just a little bit cloudy in the centre. That will, when it's completely dry, be clear. So I'm gonna pop that one to one side. I've got my organza ribbon that I'm gonna be using. I've got Velcro dots here. These ones are the 16 mil. Oh look. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, why don't you look at what you wrote on the front? That might help. Anyway, I've got a corner punch, optional. I've got my D-rings, but again, I'll show you, you know, how you can do that really without the, the metal D-rings. That's the beautiful butterfly. I've used this for so many things and I know lots of you do have it. It is still available, I believe. I know there was a big sale on at Bright Rosa. So um, I'll share the links below, but I'm pretty sure it's still there. And that's the butterfly band die. Really nice, do some lovely, lovely cards as well with that one. And then the papers I'm using today, so it's from this one here, the Bloom and Wonder, first edition. The ones I used for the other one is this one here. So it was the By Craft Sensations. I picked these up in the works, no, sorry, in the range. Um, probably maybe now about two months ago. This is Watercolour Feelings, really lovely one. You get a lot of kind of foiling throughout. Can you see it? Really nice, so that's that one. But yeah, for today we're gonna do the Bloom and Wonder. So I've pulled out this lovely print here, which is going to be to decorate the panels. That one's going to be to decorate the sides because I think they work well together because it's all from the same paper pad. But the actual base of the gift bag is going to be this dark navy colour. So I've got the two sheets here. So this one, the one that I made back along is you can use um, your smaller, you know, your letter size or your A4 cardstock. But this one I'm gonna be using 12 by 12 today. So for those of you that have requested it, this is how you can make it bigger. So you're gonna need two pieces of, I think it was two, I don't think I ended up cutting into them. So, so along the 12 inch side, you wanna score it three and a half and then seven and then 10 and a half and you're going to keep that section there because that becomes the front tab. Then pop it along the other side and you're going to score at two and a half and at nine and a half. So these are our sides. These are all of those side, so they're, sorry, the side of the gift bag and then these are all the different panels that wrap around. So that's one piece and then you want to do the same. So actually this doesn't need to be 12 by 12. I'll trim it down in a second, but you're going to do the same again. So you're going to score it three and a half, seven, ten and a half, and then you just want to, I'm going to score it 11, but you actually want it to be 11 inches. It's just then we've got that half an inch, which is going to be our little tab. So I'm just going to trim. So yeah, this piece will be 11 by 12. Okay, so that's what you will do. You'll just score it three and a half, seven and ten and a half. And then again, along the 12 inch side here, you want to score it two and a half and nine and a half. Because we're going to stick these two together. So that tab we'll end up putting glue on, sticking it onto this one and then the whole thing will wrap around and that piece there on that first bit is gonna become this section here. It's that tab or the, yeah, the front tab or lid, whatever you wanna call it. So that is all of the scoring. So I'm gonna get rid of the scoreboard. Okay, so first of all, just fold and burnish all of these score lines. Okay, so you all have your piece with the larger, kind of tab the flap piece there and you'll have your piece with the half inch we we'll start with that one first but it really doesn't matter because you're going to cut them both the same so just grab my scissors I'll use these ones so you want to cut up all of these score lines just to the first one because these are all going to fold in on the side and then this one here I'm just going to cut up and remove that one completely Okay, like so. So again, I'll just come around this side now. So I'll cut down there and then come down this side. Remove that one. 
Okay, we'll tidy all these up in a minute, but you don't really need to, you know, usually we would take little wedges out of them. But you don't really need to do it on this one because everything gets hidden. So with this one here, you're going to do exactly the same again. And then again, very neatly cut down there because that's going to be your front. And again, work down this side. Okay, like so. Next, we want to stick this together. So we're going to put glue onto the back side of this here. I'm going to use the kalau. So I'm just cover that tab. And then just sit this one. Make sure I don't get anything on that. It's nearly dry. It dries very quick, that glossy accents. I'll show you it in a moment as well. So I'm just going to lay that one down in the center there. And just flip it over just to make sure that you've got a nice join. And this will end up being at the back anyway as well. So, But just spend a minute, make sure that's nice and secure. Okay, now you want to cover all of your side panels. I think it's easier to do now because we'll be adding the Velcro dots in a moment. So you want to obviously lay down your pattern paper first. Because I think by sticking this together, it will help you align all of the side pieces and that will all make sense in a moment. So like I said, I'm going to be using this paper here. So you will want, it's up to you whether you want to cover the base. Again, I'll bring this one in here so you'll see I've got some pattern paper on the bottom. It does reinforce it because obviously I've used the Kalau glue and if you want to put another sheet inside, so you know you might be putting maybe some small bottles of something in here, some toiletries, they can be quite weighty so you may want to reinforce it. So if you do want to cover the bottom then you'll need six pieces of the measurement I'm going to give you. Otherwise you'll just need five just to cover the other panels obviously. So these ones here measure so what was it we've got a seven inch piece here so it's six and three quarters by three and a quarter and you'll want five or six pieces okay so this piece here is going to come over there so this is going to be the front for me so i'm going to have this one so just as i was cutting them i thought this one shows that lovely pink flower there but i might actually turn it although saying that i've just had a thought the butterfly is going to cover nearly all of it so think about you know what you're going to have so actually i'm going to have this one on the top so that one like so and then i'll possibly have one of these that actually maybe hasn't got a great deal i'll do that one there and then the butterfly can go over like so and you still see the pink kind of poking out there so just kind of have a play around with your papers and your, your patterns just so you get to you know see the the lovely designs on them. That's the bottom, so I probably won't worry that one's not got a butterfly on, so that can go on the bottom and so on. So I'm just going to stick these all down. You should have a nice little quarter inch border on all of those. Okay, so that's all stuck down and that's, you know, firming up nicely. So I'm now going to grab my Velcro dots. And obviously if you want to cover the front of this, you can do as well. But because I'm having that butterfly on there and that white, you know, the outer white frame there just pops against the navy. So that's why I've chosen to keep mine plain. But um, I think I did cover it on the smaller version. And I've done Christmas ones for that as well. Because it was, yeah, it was just before Christmas. So I'm going to pop one there and one there. And then I'm just going to fold that over like so, and then you can just make sure they're all secure. I'm also going to, so again it's a bit easier, just round off the edges there. You don't have to do that, or the corners, sorry, but um, I do think it looks quite nice. Right, so you'll have this long piece, so now it's just a matter of bringing it all together. So again, fold it and make sure you secure the Velcro dots. So just pop all this away. Okay, and what we do is we're gonna pop it on its side like this. So just fold in like so, it doesn't matter how it looks. And you wanna make sure that you have this one, okay, which is the top facing the top. All right, so it's at the top of the camera here, and this is the bottom, the opposite one. And you're gonna fold that one out, the bottom one, okay? Fold it away from you and fold the top one away. That way you, you know that you're you know, you're working on the right parts. And what we're going to do is we're going to stick these ones all in like this, okay? Now you want to use a liquid glue because you want to be able to wiggle it around until you're happy that you've got it perfect. Now what I would say is if you've got a grid is make sure that the bottom here stays nice and straight because that's going to help you keep everything else lined up. 
So again, I'm going to open that out and I'm just going to dab like a blob of glue on here. We're going to be reinforcing it with a large hexagon on this side and on the inside. This is purely just to get it all into place. So I'm just tacking everything kind of down just with you know a little bit of glue and just kind of like I say keep this bottom one straight and keep the top one straight and you'll see you've got a little diamond that starts to form in the middle and when you bring the bottom one up so we're going to stick this down as well and if you pretend with that one there can you see you start to get like a, a, a funny shaped kind of hexagon in the middle like a diamond kind of hexagon there you want to make sure each time, so can you see that this lines up perfectly with this one? So if they were longer and were to be joined up, they would stick together. And actually on the smaller version, you do join them together, your opposites. But because of the size I'm making and the fact that I've used the 12 by 12, you know, you're going to get that gap in the middle, but we're going to cover all that. But as long as you make sure, so for example here, I'm making sure that these are lined up. So, you know, if you want to get a ruler, and that way you know that you've got your hexagon shape. So, you see here, so I could actually bring that one just down a little bit, like so. You can see now that they line up with each other. And again here, they line up with each other, they're nice and straight. And then the ones underneath, again, you just want to keep moving it around that liquid glue until you're happy that it all lines up and it doesn't matter if it's a little bit crooked because you're going to be drawing around your own one there isn't an exact measurement for it so even if everybody's is a little bit different it, it won't matter but you want to make sure you've got it you know as straight on as you can get it so I mean keep moving it don't worry if it all comes apart like mine did because I can just go in there with my fingers and just keep pinching as long as, if this lines up here, all of the ones underneath will line up and you've got that kind of diamond shape in the centre there. So I think I'm kind of happy with that one there. The next one, when you flip it to do the other side, will be easy because you've already shaped this one, so you've shaped your box. But that is now, you know, you can see here, these all line up. That corner lines up with this corner. Just lay your ruler down and again here, like so. Okay, so now I can flip it over, open up these ones. Again, keep the lid at the top. You can also go in if you need to and just tap down any little bits of glue you might have there. So again, leave the bottom one down and the top one. And you're going to bring in these four sides. And again, I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue. It's just something for it to kind of grab onto. Um, I think that's enough there. And I'll put a little bit on that one there. It doesn't matter which one goes over which. You kind of want them to start to grab a little bit. And again, just line up this one. But see, it's already falling into shape. See, they line up perfectly. So you don't need to do as much with this one. So it's just a little bit of playing around. But once it's kind of there, there you go. You know, it looks really good. Make sure that all stays lined up. And you want the top of this one here to line up perfectly with that score line here. See, so it hits the top of that perfectly. All right. So again, I'm just going to pop a little bit more glue under that bit there, just so it's not going to move. And then I can glue now like this. And you'll do this on the other one, because I know I didn't do it yet. Cover all of this fold that one up. Again, don't worry about any glue or any mess or anything because we're going to cover the whole thing. But we're not going to stick this one down because that's part of the lid. We're going to cut into that in a minute. And those of you that have made the smaller one, you'll see it's exactly the same way that I'm putting this together. Apart from the fact that these don't join, you know, to the to their opposite one. But it still works fine. As long as you just, you know, spend a bit of time, make sure that you stick it, you know, focus on the line on here. So that's, I can see there that's nice and flat because then it's going to stand up. So it stands up perfectly. I'm going to flip it over. Try not to make sure that sticks down, no, that's fine. Again, you're only doing it on this base one here. Okay, so with these pieces here, if I open this up, when you go to close it, these are going to go inside, but you'll see here, just 
still let that dry a second. Um, but you can you see here when I go to put it in, it hits here. So you need to take a considerable wedge off of this. So I'm going to cut right across like so. And now, see that that fits in there perfectly. So I'm going to do the same on this one. So roughly, if you want to measure, I'm going to just come across on this one here. Like so. And now I can close that inside. Like so. And can you see the top of this here where it folds over hits the top, you know, of this side part here. Just will you know, that's another indication that everything lines up. I just haven't put that one in properly there. So I just need to reposition that. So yeah, liquid glue is going to be the best thing to use for this one. But now I'm happy, we've got a really nice closure on that and all we've got to do now is make our hexagons. It actually reminds me of like the raffle tombola, you know, you kind of it moves around like this. So there you go, it's another idea. <laughs> okay, so next I want to grab this paper here. And I'll be able to get both my sides out of this or the outer sides out of this piece but I will, um, I'm going to cut white for the insides. Now the easiest way to do it is literally pop it on here and then you're going to draw around it but what I would say is flip it over and draw around it because then you know you've got the exact size. You want to line up, again this is the top, work from the bottom, line up the bottom along the bottom of the paper and then have one of the points hit that piece and that way you're you know you're maximizing your paper you're not going to have too much wastage hold it in place and then with a pencil I'm just going to draw around you know some of the sides because you don't end up drawing around all of them that's just that bottom one actually and then down here like so now you could just then cut this one and then draw around that one and cut it again for the other end, but they may still be slightly different. So what I'm gonna do is cut this one out and then I'm gonna do the other end separate. So I'm gonna cut it exactly to the pencil line, but then I am gonna trim a little bit off each side again, because I wanna have that kind of, you know, one eighth of an inch border like I have on the other piece. So that's it like so, and then just bring this one over. You then just have to move it around until you find, I think it was that way up, something like that. There we go. But like I said, I want to trim now a bit off of each side. So I'm going to trim about one eighth of an inch off of each of my sides. Keep it nice and straight. There we go. I'm happy with that. You see, and I've got that blue navy. Actually, I can take a little bit off of that one there. Let's Go. I'm really happy with that one so I'm going to stick that one down but remember open the lid because you don't want to stick anything onto that piece there so I'm going to just kind of not put glue right along that bit yet until I stick the white piece in inside because then I can stick it right towards right over that piece. See how now we're reinforcing the sides so they become very strong so that one is going to go right over there so I've got that nice border like so just going to close that up again and now again that same paper I'm going to trace around and do exactly the same and then I'm also going to do exactly the same with two pieces of white for the insides so I'm going to carry on and get all that done. Okay, so I've stuck all that down and it's really nice inside because it's all reinforced now, both sides nice and strong. Next we just need to add the handle. So I've got these pieces here which is that bit left over from when we trimmed down one of the 12 by 12 pieces and I'm cutting these two pieces to three by three quarters but that's because of these D-rings I'm using. Now these are the ones from the works, I know um, a few of you may have these same ones. Um, if not, then you could use some key rings. You can use you know, any kind of metal ring that you might have. That will still work. It doesn't have to be a D shape. But what I'm gonna do is thread this one through here because that's the three quarters, so I know that that fits these perfectly. And I'm gonna put glue 
on one side here and you just want to fold them over so that you know it's kind of halfway you don't need to score it or anything just line it up like so you see now that moves quite freely in there and we're going to attach that inside now if you want you can attach this first and then you know add the pattern paper then attach that I mean I might I don't know how much mine's dry if I've got enough time to peel that apart maybe not I don't want to do one without the other but you see what I mean you could have it in there so you don't see it I'm not too worried although saying that now I've managed to open that one let's just see because the cloud does give you a little bit of time yeah see I can just I can just get that one in there so I'm going to do that but um, I know a lot of you watch the videos before you make so <laughs> if you're like me though and you've just ripped it apart hopefully it's okay but now you want to stick that in there so you've got it poking out the top oh, got air bubble caught there so I'm going to pop this one in now while I've just done that one pop some glue on both sides and I'm going to pop it in the centre but I didn't do this on the other one so you know don't worry if you haven't because I'll show you how it looks on the other one it's okay but now you see how it's stuck in there and when that closes down it almost like acts as another little bit of a lock for it because it kind of holds obviously that's there but it holds it all in place you see so yeah if you don't want to see it because now it's disguised there I've got a little bit of a crease but it's not too bad so I'm going to do the same with this one if you don't have a d-ring you know any metalware what you could also do is cut your circle or square dies the smallest ones and cut a smaller one inside of it so you get a little ring and maybe cut them a few times and layer them up so they become quite thick and then you can use that so I know lots of people have done that when they've made the gift bags and stuff so you know if you do it out of mirrored card then it will give you that faux metal kind of finish so you know there's lots of ways around it but again I'm just going to add some glue to both sides there and just feed this one like so. Okay, so that's all done. So now I can fold in the sides, fold that down, and then I'm going to grab some more glue and I'm just going to, that's actually, you can see how clear that's now gone. Really nice, just little extra, but glitter in there, do all sorts. I'm going to just pop some glue along there. I don't actually think it needs to be on the whole bit because, yeah, it's a slightly wider than the actual front of the bag, but now I'm just going to sit that probably put some more glue on this along here actually. You might not want to add handles, you might want to keep this more like a clutch style as well so I think it looks absolutely stunning with that butterfly. Works so well with the papers. Just make sure you get it lined up in the centre there like that. Like gorgeous. And then I've just got my ribbon and I'm just going to thread that through like so. And then I've probably got way too much on here. So depending on how high you want it. And then I'm just going to, I don't know, it's probably okay actually. I'm going to put a nice bow. There you go, something like that. So now you've got your little handle for it and that nice bow on the side. And then it all opens up perfectly to a really roomy gift bag inside so I'm super super pleased with this one I think it looks gorgeous let me just bring in the purple one just so you can see the two there aren't they gorgeous so they're going to be added to my big plastic tub full of gift boxes <laughs> and bags because these are ready now to you know be given to someone as and when I need them and you could easily put a nice little gift tag on there as well with happy birthday or something on there but I think that navy with that flower print looks absolutely stunning so there you have it so I hope you've enjoyed the larger size of the hexagon gift boxes um, for those of you that requested it hopefully this has helped you out now I think it's a great it's a nice dumpy kind of size I love it so there you have it thanks for watching all of the links to as much of the product I can find will be shared below and I'll be back very soon with another video see you then bye